Good morning and welcome to St. Peter Cathedral on this beautiful Easter. I have a few announcements this morning. Come and experience God's forgiveness and mercy on April 24th, Divine Mercy Sunday. The celebration starts at 2 p.m. Detailed information is in the bulletin. The Knights of Columbus will be hosting the Silver Rose again this year. The Silver Rose promotes the dignity of all human life and Our Lady. The Silver Rose will be at the Cathedral on Divine Mercy Sunday. More information is available in the bulletin. St. Christopher's pasty sale season is coming to a close. Their last sale is April 20th. Order information is available in the bulletin. The Knights of Columbus will be holding a pancake breakfast on April 24th. Please join in this last one of the season. All donations will be accepted and help our seminarians. Our celebrant this morning is Bishop John Durfler, and he will be assisted by Deacon Don Thorin. Please join in singing our entrance procession, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his love endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His love endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. His right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad. A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Victime Pascali Lades, I molent Christiani. Victime Pascali Lades, I molent Christiani. Christians praise the Paschal Victim. Offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep. Christ the Just One paid the price. Reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life fought bitterly for this wondrous victory. 
the Lord of life who died reigns glorified. Victime Pascali Lades, Imolent Christiani. O Mary, come and say what you saw at break of day. Thy empty tomb of my living Lord. I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testified, shroud and grave close side by side. Yes, Christ my hope rose gloriously. He goes before you into Galilee. Victime Pascali Lades, Imolent Christiani. Share the good news, sing joyfully, His death is victory. Lord Jesus, Victor King, show us mercy. Amen. Alleluia. Victime Pascali Lades, Imolent Christiani. sacrificed Alleluia Let us then feast with joy in the Lord Alleluia 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 be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord on the first day of the week mary of magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb so she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
please remain standing for a blessing? Jesus is risen from the dead, Alleluia. I wish to give a warm welcome to anyone who might be visiting the cathedral this morning. Thank you for coming and joining us in this glorious Easter celebration. My brothers and sisters, as we ponder the glory of Jesus risen from the dead, let us enter into this wonderful mystery of the virtue of hope and the resurrection of Jesus. Let us enter into this mystery and ponder this connection between the virtue of hope and the resurrection of Jesus. And so, as we begin to re reflect on this virtue of hope, let us put ourselves for a moment in the shoes of the disciples. These were the closest companions of Jesus. They had spent three years of their lives with Jesus, accompanying him on his ministry. They stayed with him, they ate with him, they were taught by him. He was their teacher, their Lord, their friend. And then, very unexpectedly to them, he was brutally crucified. And imagine what was going through their minds and their hearts at this time. Now what's going to happen? Jesus is the one we were with, the one we loved, our teacher, our Lord, our friend. He's gone. Now what's going to happen? And haven't each and every one of us in some way had some experiences in our life where, where now we wonder, now what's going to happen? It is precisely in these times when we wonder now what's going to happen, that the virtue of hope and the resurrection of Jesus is so important. One of my, my close friends is a Carmelite nun in Siberia. Now, I met her, of course, when she was in the United States. Uh, we go back a, a long time. And when the Iron Curtain fell, the Lord really laid on her heart that he wanted her to go to Russia, to Siberia, and found a Carmelite monastery. That through her prayers, that would begin a spiritual revival of this land. And so she obtained permission from her superiors to do so. She studied Russian. She contacted a bishop in Siberia. And she went off, having no idea what was going to happen to her 
whether any other women would join her and, and, and found this monastery and this apostolate of prayer. And I remember a conversation I had with her where she shared with me uh, an insight in the virtue of hope. And she said, hope allows us to be taken into the arms of God. Hope allows us to be taken into the arms of God. And in those times where we wonder, well, well now what's going to happen? Isn't that when we really need to be taken into the arms of God and carried? Because we just can't see in front of us. We're not sure what's going to be next. Yet there's something in our lives that some stands in the way of, of really falling into the arms of God when we are in these times. And this is where the resurrection comes into play and is very important. You know, my memory is like a junk drawer. And, and maybe that's the same for you. But our memories often stand in the way of really falling into the arms of God. My memory is like a junk drawer. All kinds of stuff goes in it. And in that junk drawer, there's some good stuff. But there's also a lot of junk. And as we go through our life, we, we just toss all kinds of things into that junk drawer of our memory. There's those precious jewels in that drawer of our memory, those, those wonderful, joyful times that we can look back on. And they're there. But we also toss a lot of junk in there. And those might be those, those bitter hurts that we have suffered, some, some tragedies that we've experienced. And when we're in those times when we wonder, well, now what's going to happen? Doesn't some of that junk from our memory start coming up again? And when that junk from our memory comes up again, we, we remember not, not just what happened, but we also remember how we felt about it. And when that junk comes up, it, it tends to feed and amplify those thoughts that we have. Well, well, now what's going to happen? And it is here that the resurrection of Jesus needs to break into our memory and clean out the junk. In our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, we witness one of the events in that book of the preaching about Jesus' resurrection, the central mystery of our faith. And if we were to read all the way through the Acts of the Apostles, this, this simple message comes up many times in the preaching of the Apostles. Jesus died. Jesus rose from the dead. And we are his witnesses. This is the sacred memory of the church. 
And because the resurrection of Jesus is not merely an event that happened in the past, but it is so powerful it transcends time, it is also an event of the present. When this sacred memory of the church is called forward, in fact, every time we celebrate Holy Mass, the death and resurrection of Jesus is alive and present again, that one event. So Jesus said, do this in memory of me. It's a sacred memory of the church. You see, Jesus has risen from the dead. He transformed death to life. He wishes to come into our mind and our heart and, and purify our memory of all of that junk. So when we see or remember some of those things of the past. It is really connected to the sacred memory of the church, that very precious jewel that is in our mind and our heart. Because the preaching of the apostles talks about the death and the resurrection, not just the death of Jesus. And so the Lord wants to come in and transform our mind and our heart and our memory so that when some of these ugly things that are in our junk drawer come up, it's not just the event that we remember. We remember that Jesus was there to carry us. Jesus is there to sustain us. Jesus is there to show us his tender mercy. The resurrection of Jesus is meant to transform our minds and our hearts with this sacred memory of the church. So we see not just those deaths in our lives, those tragedies, those pains, those sorrows. In the midst of all of that, we see Jesus, who is there wanting to love us and sustain us and carry us. And so this is what the virtue of hope is all about. When, whenever we're in those times when we wonder what's now what's going to happen, we are to be taken into the arms of God and carried by the glory of our Lord's resurrection. Every time you come to Mass and you hear the words at the consecration, do this in memory of me, think of this sacred memory of the church the resurrection of Jesus that is present in our midst, the healing balm he wishes to pour into our minds, and the gift of hope he wishes to give us, which is nothing other than being taken into the arms of God and carried. My brothers and sisters, we live in a world today that needs hope.
We live in a world today that needs hope. We live in a world that needs to be taken into the arms of God and carried. And it is for us, followers of Jesus, to be that beacon of hope and light in the world today. As we go forth from this Mass, let our faces radiate with joy, the joy of the resurrection of Jesus and the transformation in our lives that he wants to bring about. Let us go forth from this Mass with hearts filled with gladness. Let us go forth from this Mass so filled with the love of Jesus that people will see in our lives that something is different, that something gives us hope. For we have in our minds, in our hearts, this precious radiant jewel, this memory of the church, of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we have been taken into the arms of God and carried. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, 
Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. I saw water flowing from the right side of the temple. Alleluia, alleluia. I saw water flowing from the right side of the temple. Alleluia, alleluia. It brought salvation. And the people sang in a joyful praise, Alleluia, Alleluia. I saw water flowing from the right side of the temple, Alleluia, Alleluia. And all to whom this water came were saved, and they sang Alleluia. I saw water flowing from the right side of the temple. Salvation granted and preserved for us in heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia. I saw water flowing from the right side of the temple. On this day made glorious above all others by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us pray for our needs and the needs of people everywhere. That all members of the church will rejoice in God's surpassing power for good in the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That leaders of nations and communities will rejoice in God's lasting peace in the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That we who celebrate the Paschal Feast will rejoice in God's loving kindness in the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our sick brothers and sisters those who minister to them and those in isolation may experience the mercy and love of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace on earth may be brought to us by our risen Savior, especially those suffering in Ukraine and Russia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they will return to life with him, especially Jim Alderson. We pray to the Lord. Lord God of glory, wonderful are your works in your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have made the cornerstone of our lives. Grant us what we need to live as the people who rejoice in him, this day and every day, both now and forever. Amen. 
Please join in singing our preparation hymn, which can be found on page 10 of the Liturgy Guide, The Day of Resurrection, on page 10 of the Liturgy Guide. and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
on you stay. Quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. Quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. Quitolis Dona nobis pacem. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of pure. And the truth, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Please join in singing our communion hymn, which can be found on page 13 of the Liturgy Guide, O Sons and, ja on, and Daughters, on page 13 of the Liturgy Guide. Sat and spoke unto the three. 
let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended, go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please join in singing our closing hymn, which can be found at number 212 in the diocesan hymnal, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, at number 212 in the diocesan hymnal. <laughs>